God, Jeffrey. <laughs> any, any pressure on that uh, last shot out there at the end of practice? You have to make that one, don't you? Yeah, I, I think I heard Voracek say, please, please make it. I don't know if that's exactly what he said, but, uh, but yeah, <laughs> I was just glad that I made it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, just day one in the books. Uh, how did it feel out there? Yeah, it was good. Uh, the compete was high and um, just a fun day and just another day on the ice, just enjoying it. So um, happy to be here and, and thankful to be out there. What's this like for you after you know, the last four years you've had to be an NHL player and get your first practice in? Yeah, I mean, I think for any kid it's a dream come true and um, just being able to be at my first game as on an NHL organization at Little Caesars Arena in Detroit. It's pretty cool for a kid who's from Detroit and um, just to walk into the rink today and be in the room and, and just kind of look around and see the guys in the room is, is pretty special and um, it's a great opportunity, so I'm looking forward to it. Was there a point while you were at Michigan that you started to think like the NHL would be a possibility for you and this might all come together? Uh, yeah, I mean, I tried not to think about it too much. My uh, heart was set at winning a national championship at Michigan and, and doing what I could to um, just be the best teammate and, and be the best leader that I could be. But, um, but yeah, I was just trying to keep my focus on Michigan, and, and I knew that when the time, time came, I, I would hopefully have an opportunity. So, Nick, what? what what was that first practice like for you in terms of the level of play that you're used to used to playing with, the talent you're used to being with on the ice in the college level? Did it take a step up today? Could you feel it even though it was only a practice? Yeah, I think you could feel it. I think obviously college to the NHL is uh, a jump, but um, kind of like I said at Michigan, we had a, a lot of good guys on that team too and um, a lot of guys who will, who will be in the NHL soon. So definitely made it a little bit easier with the compete days that we had at Michigan and, and just the guys that we were playing with. But um, the guys you can tell are just really smart with the puck here and, and, and really good skaters. So definitely, uh, definitely made it a bit more difficult. And what were your nerves like today, just leading up to it, and then when you actually stepped on the ice, were you a little nervous? Uh, yeah, I mean a little bit. Anytime um, making the jump here and, and being around a new group of guys, it's a little nervous. You don't really want to mess up. I, um, but it, it was a, it was a good day. Finally, uh, going through it with Kent. How nice is it to have another guy to, to have all of these experiences really since the day you signed have them together? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty special. We were good buddies back at, at Michigan. We lived uh, right next to each other, so we were always around watching hockey. And it's just nice to have somebody else to do it with here, whether if that's going out to dinner or going out to lunch, making sure we're both up in the morning, not having to worry about setting 30 alarms or whatnot. And um, Jake Christensen is actually in the same hotel as us, too, and uh, KJ's buddies with him, too, so he kind of got three of us. Uh, which is nice to have and just guys to talk to and, and socialize with and be around and ask questions, so it's good. I know graduation's a couple of weeks away. You finishing up classes. How's all that working out? Uh, could be a little better. Uh, have exams coming up and um, have a 10-page paper due in, in about a week that i got to get going on. So um, hopefully uh, try and get it done when we're traveling or, or something like that. So we'll see. You've had a front row seat for uh, Kent Johnson and all those guys on the Wolverines, obviously, all season long. You've had the opportunity to defend Kent Johnson in practices. What makes him so special for Blue Jackets fans that want to know more? Yeah, um, I mean, you can just kind of see during games and um, his deception with the puck is, is unbelievable. And um, I just think his, uh, just the way that he makes guys think he's going one way and then he'll just be going the complete other way. So um, I think that's the biggest thing is his deception and his skating and his shot um, and his ability to, to shake guys. So um, he's pretty strong on the puck, which for a guy who's 5'11", 165, 70 pounds, it's, he's pretty hard to knock off the puck, which is, which is pretty special. So uh, excited to watch him play at the next level and, and happy I get to do it with him. I've read a little bit about kind of about your background and kind of the obstacles you had to overcome and just you know kind of overlooked being a smaller guy, things like that. Is it just you look around now? You're sitting here in an NHL, you know, practice basically. How cool is that for you to see all the things you've kind of gone over that, that have gotten you to this point? I'm sure they've helped you along the way, probably some as well, just yeah. being roadblocks to get by and things that kind of inspired you. Yeah, um, I, I don't really think many people expected me to be here. So um, just to be here for me personally and, and believing in myself. Um, and having that belief has, has really helped me along the way. And um, I think the biggest thing is just competing and just working hard each and every single day, whether from I was playing high school hockey or I was playing midget major or in Michigan or, or even here, just try and compete and, and try to work as hard as I can and have fun. So if I'm not having fun, then why am I playing, you know? So um, that's the biggest thing is I'm just trying to soak it all in and, and enjoy it and, and compete every single day. 
Yeah, and um, you're the captain of Michigan. I know in any time that's an honor, but not only that, you had so many great players there. I mean, just what did that mean to you to kind of have that role the last couple, last year and uh, get that scholarship? And I mean, it had to really be mean a lot to you as a Michigan guy to have that honor. Yeah, I mean, anytime uh, you get to wear uh, the C anywhere um, in college or, or in general, it's a pretty great opportunity and, and was very special to me. And especially being able to be a, a Michigan guy um, was a was a dream come true for me. And um, Kind of like I, I, I keep saying this all the time, but all these all these draft picks and, and all these guys on our team who are who are going on to the next level at Michigan, um, they're not just unbelievable hockey players, but they're great people too. So um, lifelong friendships that, that I'll have forever, and I'm really excited to see see them go to the next step and, and have uh, play NHL games soon here. So it should be good. When did the Blue Jackets start talking to you? Ken mentioned they kind of asked him about you, and how did those conversations go? What were they telling you they liked about your game? Uh, probably around, I'd say, Christmas time. Uh, obviously, um, the staff watches, watched a lot of Michigan games because of Kent. So uh, I think they were able to see me play a lot throughout just this last year and um, reached out around Christmas and um, met Rick and, and Yarmo and, and Basil uh, after one of the games, which is nice to and pretty special and, and cool to meet the GM and, and obviously a guy like Rick Nash, too, um, after games. So just had good conversations with them about opportunity, about coming in here and um, just trying to do my thing and, and compete and, and play my game. So um, really respected and, and um, believed in, in what they were telling me and, and what they were saying. So it was just good conversations. And um, you could tell they, they really cared and, and really genuinely had interest. So it was good. Nick, you've had a lot of moments since Saturday afternoon. Have any of them been call home moments? Oh, I got to tell you about this. I mean, what what has stood out over the last two or three days? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, I, I'll call my parents all uh, every day and, and kind of let them know. I uh, had a little bit of time yesterday just to kind of reflect and, and talk to people, whether if that's old teammates or or friends or or other family too. So, um, pretty cool just having conversations with with people and, and just seeing how, how much they really care about me and, and really uh, support me. So um, a lot of credit to my parents for, for everything that they've done for me. And um, yeah, it's, it's definitely nice to, to call home and have my brother asking about what it was like to meet Patrick Line or, or stuff like that. And um, it's pretty cool today I'll, going down on a 2 on 0 and thinking in my head, like, OK, I'm passing it to Line, like put it on his tape. Like stuff like that, it's like pretty funny that I'll that I'll tell my brother or, or tell my parents when I give them a call, and, and they'll laugh about it. So um, it's good. So I'm just trying to enjoy every moment and, and try and get better every single day. Take a few on Zoom. Go ahead, uh, Aaron Forslund. Thanks, Glenn. Nick, welcome to Columbus. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, um, when you you've been described to me as a as a guy that plays with a, a chip on his shoulder, and I'm wondering if that. Chip was put there by the people, maybe not thinking you belonged to Michigan and not thinking you belonged as an NHL consideration, et cetera, et cetera. And, and do you plan to keep that chip there as long as you possibly can? Is that part of your game and your makeup? Yeah, I think that's that's a big part of my game is, is playing with physicality and um, not being afraid to, to play physical. Um, but yeah, I, I think that comes from just kind of growing up and like you said, having that, having that chip on my shoulder and um, having an older brother who would Tossed me around in the basement playing mini six or, or playing basketball, and um, obviously when you're when you're the small kid on the block or the small kid in school, uh, you got to fight for everything you get. So I think that's kind of a big thing growing up for me that that I was able to learn and um, able to carry through my career so far. So I definitely plan to continue to do that. And can you confirm did an NHL team offer you last year and you turned it down to to come back to Michigan? Uh, yeah, I wanted yeah. to. Obviously, being a Michigan guy, I wanted to be the captain of this uh, Michigan my senior year and, and get my degree and um, be able to be just a captain of, of the team that we had with all the guys. So, yeah. um, very thankful and, for my time. And that team expressing interest was, or, or was that the first time, or was there a moment before that where you thought an NHL career was possible after college? Um, I mean, I always kind of thought about it uh, in my head kind of thinking that I could do it but um, I think kind of once that happened is when it really first hit me of you know maybe I maybe I really can or maybe I'm not that far off so I think that was that was a big step for me to take in in terms of development and in the way that I, that I thought about my game and, and where I could take it yeah and can you say what what set 
the Blue Jackets apart from some of the other teams you you had interest from just these last couple of days? Yeah, I think it's just all my conversations with uh, with Yarmo and, and Basil and the rest of the staff too. And um, I mean, the, the culture that they're trying to build here in Columbus is just they want guys who compete, and and I think that's that's the way I play. I compete every single day, and. Um, so that's that was one of the biggest things for me, and just had honest conversations with them and, and where they thought I was at and where where they wanted me to be. And um, I think there's just a, a great opportunity here to play and, and develop. So, thank you. We'll go to Derek Harper. Go ahead, Derek. You you're obviously new here, but I don't know if you've seen this fan base. They love this team. How big is that for you coming into a city that really loves it? Yeah, I mean it'll be uh, I'm, it'll be really fun. I'm really looking forward to it. I've heard a lot of good things about the city and um, the atmosphere in the rink, so uh, really looking forward to it. And um, like I said, I've I've only heard good things about the city of Columbus and, and the atmosphere here. So. Okay, we'll close out with Mark Schein. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you, Glenn. Just um, Nick, welcome to Columbus. Just your conversation with Zach Wierenski, a fellow Michigan or fellow defenseman, just your opportunity now to be able to get to know him and learn from him as you go along. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's pretty special, especially being able to be a Michigan alumni. And um, I've, like I said, I've only heard good things about him too and, and the way he plays and not only who he is as a hockey player, but who he is as a person too. And um, we had a great resource in uh, Brandon Narado, Michigan's uh, assistant coach who, who works with uh, – Zach over the summer, so um, they have a really good relationship. So I was able to talk to Narado a lot about him and um, just kind of get to pick his brain and, and everything. So really looking forward to, to growing a relationship with Zach and, and the rest of the guys on the team, and um, should be fun. So I'm really excited. Recording stopped. Yep. Thanks, guys.